Domestic violence laws have changed dramatically in recent years. Some of the trends make sense, like expanding the definition of who an intimate partner can be to reflect some changes in values in society. Other changes may have been well-intentioned, but poorly executed. For example, one of the big drivers of change in the area of domestic violence was O.J. Simpson, who I'm sure everyone will remember as famously being found not guilty, but civilly liable in the killing of his ex-wife Nicole and her friend Ron Goldman. One of the things that surfaced in that case was that police had been called to O.J. Nicole's home for domestic violence allegations eight times in the years prior to her death, but that O.J. had never been arrested. Because of that, law enforcement agencies had a massive attitudinal shift. If somebody calls police complaining of domestic violence after O.J. Simpson, somebody is going to get arrested. While the rationale behind that policy may have been good, in practice, it sometimes became a race to the phone, and the person who called was the victim, and the person who complained about was going to jail, but sadly, some couples even used domestic violence allegations as a way to get leverage in a divorce or child custody fight. These cases are often factually complex and very emotionally charged. Adding to the complexity in this area is that there are many potential criminal charges that can be brought. The most frequently encountered domestic violence charge is violating California Penal Code Section 273.5, the traditional domestic violence charge against an intimate partner, and which can result in serious custody time for even trivial injuries. Other potential charges include simple battery, criminal threats, stalking, sexual battery, and more. What can make this even more complex still is the unique issues that arise in terms of bail, the kinds of protective orders that the court can issue, even requiring the defendant to move out of their house, the kind of evidence that can be introduced in a domestic violence case, which is far broader than in other kinds of criminal cases, and the kinds of punishments that can be imposed in domestic violence cases. Of course, the number one misconception that many people still have is that the victim can choose to drop the charges after making a domestic violence complaint. Not only is this untrue, but attempting to do so could make matters worse for the defendant, since prosecution experts will often say that this recantation is a symptom of battered person syndrome. Because of the unique issues that arise in domestic violence cases, if you or someone you care about has been charged with a domestic violence crime, please consult with a skilled lawyer right away. On behalf of everybody here at the Kavanoki Law Firm, we hope this information helps.